Right. Uh, today we are going to look into uh, the first prose lesson that you have uh, in the first semester. And uh, the title of the story is uh, The Curb in the Sky. Right. Um, now, curb, C-U-R-B, we are looking at... Uh, have you ever, ever come across this word, the curb in the sky? The curb, basically, we are referring to uh, a pavement, you know, the edge of a footpath. And uh, but the only uh, difference here is that the author has titled uh, uh, po uh, the, the prose lesson as the curb in the sky. Uh, it's written by James Thurber. And uh, uh, I would want to read a little bit about the author. It's there in your textbook. And uh, I'm, I'm going to share the PDF also with you um, so, so that, you know, in case you take some time to buy the textbook, you will still have this with you. So James Thurber was an American humorist. After working as a reporter for various newspapers, he finally joined the New York New Yorker magazine and uh, established himself as an essayist and a short story teller. Uh, short story writer, sorry. The... Seal in the Bedroom, My Life and Hard Times, and The Middle-Aged Man on the Flying Trapeze are some of Thurber's well-known books. He also became known for his cartoons. The Thurber Prize for American Humor was established in his honor. The Curb in the Sky tells the story of Dorothy and Charlie Deschler. Dorothy had the habit of constantly interrupting. Other, I think this, uh, this we will know even in the course of the lesson. Right, so I've read a little bit about uh, the author. He's a humorist, okay? And uh, as you read, uh, as I read uh, a little while ago, uh, it, he also was into writing. So he was uh, part of, he was the editor. Uh, he was uh, part of the New Yorker magazine. And then uh, he was a short story writer. And uh, in his honor, there, was, there is this very famous Thurber Prize for American Humor, which was established in his honor. So what you, you sort of anticipate what we are expecting from this story. Um, uh, basically, as the title suggests, the curb in the sky there itself, you know, um, if you take some time and think about what uh, this could be um, on the basis of what we've read about the author, you know, we are looking at a, a humor, a humorous story. So I'm going to look at today's, uh, this particular video, for the next 15-20 minutes, we are going to look at the pre-reading questions um, as we have discussed in the, uh, the introductory class um, where I spoke to you about um, um, the curriculum, uh, basically the topics, the units that we have. Uh, we've looked at the expectations that I have from you and we also looked at um, I also told you what I what uh, what basically is going to be my purpose uh, of uh, you know the takeaways of this particular semester have been very clearly stated to you. So as I told you in, in when I was talking about the takeaways, the takeaways is not just getting a great score in your uh, semester exam. That is something that you've always been doing. Maybe in your intermediate, some of you would have got great scores in English without even having too many classes uh, being taught. But that's not going to be my purpose. At the end of um, this particular semester, you all should be better in your listening, speaking, reading and writing skills. You all should be better communicators. You should, all, you should be more confident when you stand in front of a crowd and you try to uh, speak to them. So we, we straight away get into the pre-reading questions. These are the pre-reading questions that you have. Uh, the first question says, when someone speaks to you, do you pay attention or listen carefully? When someone speaks to you, do you pay attention or listen casually? Sorry. So, two things there. Do you listen casually or you pay attention? This is one quality. Uh, we also have a few soft skills that we'll be doing in the course of this semester. And uh, one of the things that we understand, you all will understand when we, are, when, we are, when we are doing the soft skills is the importance of this particular skill listening. Somehow, this is one skill that I do spend a lot of time 
trying to help you to understand because this is one skill which can make a huge difference uh, in your life too. So the question is very simple. So if we need to, uh, you need to ask yourself, I need to ask myself, how good a listener am I? Am I uh, a casual listener? Do I listen casually? Or do I indeed pay attention to what people are saying? Now this is one thing that uh, I, I've always uh, um, observed among students that they seem to be listening but they are daydreaming. They seem to be listening uh, but they are thinking about something else. Their attention span is very poor and this is something not just in India but across the globe. But whatever conversations you have, you are not talking about extended conversations which last from 30 minutes to one hour. I am talking about those five minute encounters, a small talk that happens uh, among friends. Uh, maybe you are attentive when it's a close friend and when you're not, maybe you switch off when it's uh, somebody who is not that close to you. So this is something that I would want to ask you, do a self-evaluation, give yourself a score on, on a scale of 1 to 10 and you'll understand that this is one, one particular skill that most of us are lacking in. If there is something interesting, if it's your favorite uh, film star, maybe you listen. If it's, if it's one of your um, uh, favorite sport, maybe you're listening to the commentary. If it's your best friend, you're listening to him or her. But then on other occasions, when you have this small talk with a grocer, uh, when, when there's a conversation with, uh, with your neighbor, when there's, when there's a um, call from someone um, unknown to you, and uh, do you really listen carefully? Or is it just casual listening? Now, I understand that we are not supposed to listen carefully and pay attention to anybody and everybody. That's not possible. But what I'm talking about is this particular skill of listening, which somehow has gone out of the window in many cases uh, amongst us. We need to certainly work on that. Okay, that was the first question. That's going to form a very important part of the story too. Because we have one particular character, at least in the story, who is extremely poor in this skill of listening attentively. Right. We move ahead to the second question. The second question is, how do you feel when you are speaking and someone interrupts you continuously? Now, I am reminded of some of those sessions that we have. You know, it could be the last hour of the day. You know, the last hour of the day at St. Mary's is... Uh, something like you know it goes it goes on till 250 okay so 155 to 250 is the last session now the question is how do you feel when you're constantly uh, when you're speaking and someone interrupts you continuously now I can uh, understand uh, this situation perfectly because I've, I've not had perfect classes all the time there have been times where uh, students have been disoriented you know maybe they, they, they had just come from a sports hour maybe they, they, they had a it was a fest day and you know they had fun and then they had to uh, listen to some boring grammar lesson taught by me I really don't know I'm not blaming anybody uh, I don't like to do that but what I'm trying to tell you is nobody likes to be interrupted in in the middle and you've had these encounters at home when your parents have been talking to you and trying to tell you something very, very important and you don't have um, the, what do you say, wherewithal to, uh, to listen to all that they say. You interrupt them and that changes the course of the conversation. They could really get cross with you, angry with you because of this uh, attitude of yours. Now, we need to ask ourselves this question very, very seriously. We need to do that. The reason for this is because this is one habit that you may have. I'm not saying we do it all the time, but maybe you have this habit of not, uh, not listening to the others carefully. You have this habit of interrupting people's conversation. And when you do that, it's, it's, it actually tells a lot about your personality. And the reason I think we have um, 
this particular, uh, these so many of these soft skills being taught to you in the course of uh, the, the six semesters. In fact, English is going to be there even in your fifth and sixth semester uh, coursework. Uh, the reason is because there is a terrible lack of many of these skills among students. I'm just, I'm not just talking about students. It is a terrible lack of this skill of not listening carefully, of interrupting people uh, amongst most people around us. This is something that has never been taught. But the question that I'm asking you today is, do we really need to teach someone this skill? Now, I, I perfectly understand that your parents have never ever been taught this skill. How did they pick it up? How did they become so good, most of them, at this without ever being taught? I always talk to my students and say, there are so many of these skills being offered to you on a platter, but you don't want to uh, learn them. And uh, by the time you realize uh, it will be too late. These are skills that companies are looking for. These are skills that organizations are looking for. These are skills that you need to be good at because for a successful businessman, entrepreneur, you ask any of them out there, they are extremely good listeners. They are not doing blah, blah, blah all the time. So that's where I think, uh, again, the second question also is a sort of a self-evaluation for ourselves. Ask yourself this question, do I do this? Now, how do, how do you get an answer? You ask your best friends. You do a small test. Maybe I'll give you a small template of 10 questions and maybe you can share it uh, with your best friend and maybe he would be uh, a good uh, person to analyze whether you do this. I mean, I'm not saying you do this all the time, but it could be really annoying. It could be self... Um, what do you say? Uh, it could be something that it could harm you, yourself, big time self-damaging we are going to work for organizations very soon in a, in a span of two years three years some of you do your masters and then get back we all need to work somewhere we all need to run an organization some of you have uh, already have your parents who have set up a business for you and you think it's going to be a cakewalk let me tell you it's not going to be a cakewalk if you don't become good at some of these skills let me give you an example of uh, what happens in some of these big companies. Some years ago, I happened to be part of a training program called as Campus Connect, Train the Trainer program. And uh, this was a program which was, uh, which was initiated by one of the top companies in India. We all know about this company, it's called as Infosys. And the, the purpose of this particular program was to help teachers, trainers to um, to train them so that they can go back to their classrooms and teach their students some of these skills. In fact, they had a book already. Uh, they, they had uh, quite a few modules and uh, there was a testing mechanism. We had to grade them and all. There was a series of lectures, lessons that we need to uh, do for them. And they, they, they were doing all this. Uh, they were not charging as far as I remember. I don't think the students were charged. All they needed to do is they needed to register for this course and uh, they would be certified at the end of the course. Uh, this happened when I was working for one of the engineering colleges. Now, why am I talking about this? Infosys spends a lot of amount of time on this uh, tra uh, on training uh, the, uh, the recruits. So people who have been recruited by Infosys, who are good, that's the reason why they get selected. These are the people who are trained again. These are the people who are trained again. Uh, they are sent to a facility somewhere in Mysore for about 45 days or two months where they get trained again. The reason is by the time they uh, come out of this program, uh, this uh, sort of a sort of a finishing school which should have been done at college itself uh, but uh, was not done and although they are the student uh, although the recruits are pretty good with a lot of those skills they still lack in some basic soft skills now was it necessary for emphasis to spend money spend time recruit people 
send them to Mysore, train them for 45 days and get them. I'm going to use a very powerful term uh, which uh, is used in the training circles in most of these multinational companies called as getting them industry ready. Now we need to understand that Usman University also has done whatever it has done in the English curriculum across the six semesters because companies find that students are pretty good with their subject, they, they've got great grades but they are pretty poor when it comes to these soft skills. I know I moved away and spoken about a lot of other things. The reason for this is one particular skill lacking among a lot of graduates today is listening skills. One particular skill uh, which they don't even know of that are pretty poor at is the ability to listen attentively. Number two, some of them are pretty bad uh, at this because they are fond of interrupting other people's conversations and sometime during the course of this semester you need to remind me we will do a session on group discussion the reason why companies have a one particular uh, uh, assessment uh, form before they recruit uh, employees is group discussion and the reason is there are certain things that come out as part of this group discussion that's what they think uh, you could actually uh, fake it in that group discussion but when you get into the real job situation they will find you out so I've spent a lot of time on these two questions the reason why I've done that is just to help you to emphasize uh, to help you to understand the importance of careful listening it does a lot of good for you you don't need to do the talking all the time you will have opportunities to speak but how much of a listening do you do and how much of careful listening do you do? Do you have this habit of interrupting other people's conversations is something that um, we will learn as part of this prose lesson. But um, I also am emphasizing this because this is one skill that I would want all of you to have in order to be successful in life. One last question that is there part of the pre-reading uh, exercise. Is it a good habit to correct others constantly? Again, when does this happen? When do you have this habit of correcting people constantly? When do you have this habit? I mean, uh, uh, where did you get this from? If at all you have this habit. The reason why you are fond of correcting uh, people constantly is because it could be a serious problem from your side. It could be a sort of a complex that you have where you think that the other person is better than you and if you allow this person to continue to do the talking without interrupting him, I mean, you are, you are doing a disservice to yourself. It, it hits your ego. These are ego issues. The other reason why you could be doing uh, this is because you want to, um, somehow, you, somewhere you have this uh, feeling in you that you are always right. Now, both of these things, Number, number one was that you, you have this complex. You don't want the other person to talk. Number two is you have this uh, feeling in you uh, that you are better than the others. Now, both of these qualities are bad. We, are, we have to be lifelong learners. There is something to learn from uh, even the small vegetable vendor when you go for shopping. There is something to learn from the mechanic where you get your bike serviced. There's something to be learned from your teachers. There's something to be learned from the housekeeping staff at college. They're, these are learning opportunities. There's something to be learned from the billboards that you see when you're traveling on the bus. We need to have this attitude in us rather than constantly interrupting people, correcting people. And uh, what is this? Um, correcting others constantly. I don't think you're right there. You know, I, I don't agree with you is a very uh, forceful way of trying to tell somebody that you are not good. And there's a nice way of, you know, uh, these are skills that you need to learn. There's a nice way of disagree. You know, there are some words and phrases which you could use. Uh, like I, I would give you one example here. You could always say, um, okay, can you just give me a minute? I, I feel that whatever you're saying, may not be the absolute truth because uh, I would choose to 
disagree with you here is certainly not being rude. These you you find you should find uh, you basically need to uh, sort of um, dis. Uh, you, I I will not use that word disrupt. You you need to find those small uh, gaps in the conversation. And that's where you need to use these statements in order to uh, help the other person to pause and then you bring forward your point of view. I know there are people who do the uh, talking all the time and they are not always right and you feel that uh, why am I there in this particular situation. You have such encounters but still it doesn't give you a right to disturb them, to interrupt them to constantly break, uh, disrupt the conversation there are better ways of doing it and I'm not saying this is this shouldn't be done ever there are going to be times when you have to tell the person excuse me I think uh, uh, we, we will end it here there are going to be disagreements there are going to be arguments where maybe you need you could do that and I'm giving you that benefit of doubt but you are not going to do it in the course of every conversation that you have with people and that, that shows that you lack in this particular skill poorly. So all I'm going to uh, sort of sum it up now. This is uh, the introductory class for the curve in the sky. Number one, we were looking at uh, the ability to pay attention. Uh, the disadvantage of, uh, you know, listening casually. Number two, we looked at uh, speaking uh, the question was how do you feel when you are speaking and someone interrupts you continuously how do you feel you feel very annoyed so when you feel annoyed you also should just guard yourself that you are not committing this crime the third question that we looked at what was is it a good habit to correct others constantly absolutely not it's a terrible thing to do so I'll just stop here, uh, just let these thoughts, these questions keep coming back at you again and again, do a self-evaluation test, ask your friend, uh, I could help you if you need uh, uh, some help in this, but I think uh, you, the best judge in this case would be your close friends, don't tell me you don't have close friends, uh, you, you do have people, uh, maybe the close friends in the sense I'm not talking about friends at college, it could be school friends, it could be your intermediate friends. It could be someone at home, maybe your cousin or your younger brother, a sibling, uh, who's your best friend or maybe your mom in some cases and why not your dad because uh, I think uh, many of you share a wonderful relationship with your dad as well. So I'll stop here uh, only to, uh, don't take this video as an introductory video to the curb in the sky. Take it as a video where you do some self-evaluation, ask yourself a lot of these questions and then um, you will come out as a better person because you know some of these weaknesses which certainly can be improved upon. So thank you so much for your careful uh, listening. Um, I hope you get back and do some homework on this and uh, when we come back for the next session uh, either online or offline we will have, I will have a lot of inputs from you folks uh, on this and we'll have a healthy discussion. Thank you so much. Have a great day.